So to start number one, I'm going to first plug in the 4 to find out the value of the function um, where the discontinuity happens. And I'm going to make a sketch. You could use your calculator to help you. So when I find the limit, as x approaches 4 from the right is this way, and the graph is approaching 1. I should probably label this. As we approach 4 from the left, that's this way, the y value is approaching 13. Because these are different, the limit at 4 does not exist. The value of the function at 4, because this is where it's equal, the value is 1. So we're going to do the same thing for number 2. could use my calculator to help me graph that, or you could plug in some points. So the limit as x approaches 4 from the right is positive 2. As we approach 4 from the left, that's negative 2. Those numbers don't match, so the limit does not exist. And the value, the function at 4 does not exist, because both of these are open. Or if you go to plug in 4, your denominator would be 0, and we're not allowed to divide by 0. Okay, three is going to be the same way. Sketch a graph. So the limit as x approaches four from the right. The graph does not exist over here, so this would be does not exist. As we approach four from the left, the graph does exist. So the y value from the left, we approach zero. Those don't match, so the limit does not exist, and f of four is zero. Okay, moving on. Sketching a graph of each of these functions. An exponential graph goes through the y-axis at one. A log graph goes through the x-axis at one. Piecewise, that could be many different um, types of piecewise. Our first uh, problem, number one, was a piecewise graph. Uh, number two was a piecewise graph. Um, I'll draw a different kind. We'll make it a step function. Polynomial, that could be anything. That's an x to the fourth, potentially. You could have an x to the third. Rational like 1 over x would look like this. And trigonometric sine or cosine, I'll sketch a cosine graph. Now finding the first and second derivatives. You'll have your formula sheet uh, that's in the front of this packet for your exam. So to find y prime for this first one, I'm going to use the power rule. And then to find the second derivative, we find the derivative of the first derivative. Okay, so for number, or I'm sorry, letter B, 2 to the x, or 2 e to the x. Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So this stays 2 e to the x. And the second derivative works the same way. Okay, for C, derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. I'm going to rewrite that as x to the negative 1 to help me do the second derivative. Use the power rule, but then I'm going to rewrite that with a positive exponent. 
Derivative of sine of x, again, look at your formula sheet, or maybe you have sine of x memorized. Now the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. For letter E, we're going to use the quotient rule. I'm going to need a little bit more space. We look at our formula sheet. The formula sheet defines the top function as f of x. And the bottom function is g of x. So to help myself, I'm going to find the derivative of each piece here. So y prime is the derivative of the bottom. I'm sorry, it's the derivative of the top times the bottom, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. So simplifying this, I'm left with negative 3 over x minus 4 squared. So to find the second derivative, we need to use the quotient rule again with our first derivative. So, solving that, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. I'm going to use the power rule all over the bottom squared. So a squared squared gives me to the fourth. So simplifying that, the negatives times the negative is positive, so I get 6 times x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 to the fourth. And then I can reduce, so my final answer is 6 over x minus 4 to the third.